uh, like I was saying, uh, the meeting uh, looked into the uh, general uh, situation of the country and uh, also we take uh, note of uh, what uh, we have been able to drive from the uh, federal government in terms of uh, support from uh, Mr. President. And we also look at the certain areas, particularly human capital development. We also look at agriculture, we look at the infrastructure. So like I was saying, uh, what Mr. President has done to not waste generally in terms of infrastructural development is unprecedented. That is the reason why we came out openly, all the governors, all the ministers, major stakeholders from the Northwest, and made it clear that uh, the support, uh, particularly the support to Badagri Road Project, uh, this is the road uh, that uh, passed or will pass a lot of uh, towns uh, around those areas, and it will certainly uh, increase the level of economic activities revitalize the economy for people within those rural, rural areas. Uh, for us, that is more important because in North West, we believe there must be projects that will support the economies of the people that are in the rural areas. That will be the things that uh, will really reduce the level of poverty, create jobs, and also support our team in uh, people that are living in rural areas. Uh, for us, it's very significant. Kind of, when you look at also the Sokoto, Zampara, Kasina, Kaduna Road project that is ongoing right now, is passing four states. And of course, uh, for us, it's very key and it's very important. And President Bola at the moment is uh, uh, constructing the road I've just mentioned. Not to talk of Abuja, Kaduna, Kanu road that was abandoned. Uh, I met Mr. President personally. Uh, two months ago, and I complained to him. And of course, within two weeks, he unbundled the project, uh, brought in Ali Kodangote to take uh, some part of the project, and also brought uh, the Samadhi Sakarabi uh, and, uh, and allow Bega to take some part of it. This is, this is a project that has been ongoing uh, for over a decade right now, and nobody cares about uh, fixing or looking at the time frame. Uh, in which the project would be completed. But uh, of course, I even made a similar uh, uh, call when I was in the National Assembly in the Senate precisely during President uh, uh, Buhari's administration that uh, his job was to will not forgive us if the, the Abuja Kaduna is, is abandoned. But today, I'm happy uh, President Bola Metunubu have made a very uh, significant uh, intervention. I would do it is a bit. Uh, this project would finish in less than a year. For me, these are things we we'll look into. And of course, the support for uh, state governors generally, particularly in the area of uh, support for uh, smallholder farmers. Uh, the president has done a lot, not only for the Northwest, but for all the states of Nigeria, but for us in Northwest. You know, agriculture is very important. Uh, he has given fertilizer, he has given inputs, he has given equipments. Uh, that is our equipment to every state to support smallholder like farmers. For me, it's significant. So when you are judging the president, we need to look at some of the efforts he has made. But to say that we did, uh, yeah, uh, the president will solve all the problems he inherited. I think it's been very unfair. Even if you are in the opposition, you must be fair. Because uh, the president came in, there are a lot of problems. He can't fix them within a year. But the step he has taken so far for me is commendable. And when you look at the economy, even the removal of full subsidy for me is extremely commendable. But I said it uh, in the past that uh, the beneficiaries of uh, full subsidy will certainly uh, challenge or attack any uh, attempt, uh, Mr. President, to remove the full subsidy because we have very few powerful Nigerians that benefit from it. But of course, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a policy that uh, we might not see the results within six, seven, eight months. But yes. in the long run, certainly everyone will get it, particularly the downtrodden yeah. uh, black people. Yeah, uh, Your Excellency, this is Samuel Mashe. Um, the, Thank you. you. You specifically mentioned that that uh, APC stakeholders uh, meeting about human 
capital development. Can you speak to that? Yeah, the woman capital I'm talking about is that uh, when you look at uh, the intervention of Mr. President in the areas of uh, education, in the area of healthcare, and social economic activities of our people, for me, is something that uh, is commendable. Uh, as a governor, I can tell you clearly, Mr. President, he in his project at the national level would set governors. Look at the revolution in the healthcare uh, sector. This is the first time where Mr. President brought all the governors together with the Ministry of uh, Health uh, and brought in all the uh, development partners together and made it clear to everyone. We signed collectively with the federal government, the state governments, to ensure that the healthcare is done on that work. In the past, there was nothing like that. And at that meeting, all the development partners were brought in by Mr. President under the leadership of the Minister of Health, uh, uh, who did a lot, and he was leading it with our commissioners of health uh, from various states. For me, this is leadership, and that is the reason why we are now getting the benefits. In the past, uh, things like that were not really organized, were not coordinated, and the intervention has affected even some level of support, not only at our secondary health care, even going down to primary health care. So for me, it's leadership that is more important. And President Bola Metinubu have done a lot in that area. Some people might not come out and say because of opposition. But I believe as, as leaders, we must commend Mr. President, particularly in that effort, in the area of health care development, that he is able to synergize between the federal government, state governments, down to local governments in terms of primary health care development in our own country. And for me, it's commendable because this is where we need to focus on so that everyone will not be left behind when it comes to health care, particularly those in the rural areas, the downtrodden in particular, the undersat and the privileged and the poor people in yeah, the rural areas. As a follow-up, Your Excellency, uh, I was, I was speaking of human development, I want to go to the issue of uh, appointments because uh, there have been some people talking about uh, the marginalization of the of the Northwest. And uh, but but the speaker Abbas spoke and he was talking about the fact that that uh, the Northwest has never had it so good under uh, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Can you speak to yeah. that? Yeah, yeah we, it was reflected in the community I read on behalf of all the stakeholders uh, of the Northwest. We made it clear at that time. That was never a time. Let me be very blunt here. Uh, for me, if you ask me, the major areas uh, of our interest, uh, not only the Northwest, but let me also be very blunt by saying the entire North, Northern Nigeria. Uh, that is why I believe uh, President Bola Metin, we should be commended for being someone who is a nationalist, Decentralized, and uh, he's a leader who believes every part of the country belongs to him. But still, there are some uh, people because of uh, uh, politics will not come out to say the truth. But uh, you see, these are things that are clear. Uh, let me start with the north and the northwest in particular. Uh, what is the major problem we're facing uh, here in the, in the northern part of Nigeria? When I was in the Senate, I made it clear to everyone that uh, the statistics before us then, because I was the chairman of the Committee of Banking, oversighting about 90% of the financial service sector of Nigeria as a senator then. But of course, I look at it critically. Our major problem is two areas, education, healthcare, agriculture. These are the, the two, healthcare and education are the major components of human capital development. Now we're talking about agriculture, which is very important for us in northern Nigeria. So when you, and another area that is very important is issue of security. Today, whether we like it or not, we must commend Mr. President that today, the Minister of Education is from northern Nigeria. The Minister of uh, Health is from northern Nigeria. The Minister of Agriculture is from northern Nigeria. For me, these are the three major issues, areas where we need to focus because we have a lot of people that are financially excluded. A lot of people that have been completely uh, neglected 
And today, in northern Nigeria, our focus should be education and healthcare as well as agriculture. But when you look at the issue of security, the National Security Advisor is not The Minister of Defense, both the senior minister and the junior minister from northern Nigeria. See, when you look at these areas, I believe sometimes we need to put ourselves that we did in Kaduna in the Northwest uh, uh, Stakeholders meeting. We look at ourselves and say, the president of the space. We need to sit down and come up with our strategy. How do we carry our people along? This problem of poverty, problem of other school children we are facing in northern Nigeria. Today, you look at other school children. Yes, Nigeria is number one in the whole world, but northern Nigeria are now problem because most of those other school children are domiciled in northern Nigeria. There are a state in northern Nigeria that have over one million out of school children in a state, one state. So for me, it's worrisome, but we have the Minister of Education, what the junior and the senior. Of course, agriculture, for me, is one of the major drivers of our economy in northern Nigeria. For me, in Kaduna State, we contribute about 42.8% of our GDP. That's agriculture. The same thing with many states in northern Nigeria. We have both the senior minister and the junior minister. They're all from northern Nigeria. So what do we need, need again? We need to sit down. All right. Like we did it All Look right. This, we did the person who run into attacking the president because of politics. Uh, not only northern Nigeria, many other parts of Nigeria, like we made it clear. Mr. President. Absolutely, Your Excellency. Um, I agree with you on uh, some of uh, the, com uh, the discussions you've have, uh, you have uh, discussed. Anyways, um, I also want to uh, discuss with you about uh, some of uh, the agreements at the meeting uh, with uh, the Northwest leaders. Uh, you mentioned in your speech that uh, the Senate should pass the Northwest Development Bill. I also want to, you know, take you up on that following your uh, take about... Um, uh, development of human capital in that region. Uh, we also see that uh, the Niger Delta Development Commission was also uh, developed just for this. And we also have uh, uh, another senator, that's uh, Senator Bega Daniel, sponsoring a bill for the Southwest. But what does uh, the Northwest leaders, what do they hope to achieve if this bill is passed? I, I know that it's uh, been passed uh, for concurrence to, uh, by the House of Reps. I, I honestly speaking, uh, not not because I'm from the Northwest, but uh, when I was in the National Assembly, uh, I was a senator with the highest number of views that were assented by the president then in the in Nigeria. But uh, I know the art of lawmaking, and of course that is the reason why when I read the uh, the drafts and I also followed the first reading, second reading, and uh, so the third reading. Of the, of the Northwest Development Commission, I was very impressed because I look at all the demands. I look at why they said I commended the Deputy Senate President, uh, uh, Senator Jibrim Barrow, and also the Speaker of the House of Representatives. In the House of Representatives, about 40 Senate uh, members of the House of Representatives from the Northwest jointly sponsored it. But in the Senate, also, we had uh, Senators who are not even from the Northwest. They supported the bill. So for me, it's commendable. Uh, everyone believes in even development in Nigeria. But to now, as someone from the Northwest, I can tell you that, look, all the development indices in the country today suggest that we should have Northwest Development Commission at this critical time. When the Northeast Development Commission were, was created, uh, we knew what happened. There was a lot of problem in the Northeast because of the problem of industry, uh, terrorism, the issue of Boko Haram. But today, no region in Nigeria, as of today, is facing challenges that has to be economic the problems, as well as the looking at development indices. We are worse than any other region in Nigeria. That is the reason why at that meeting, I made it clear that I have no doubt in my mind the so president will ascend to that bill. But the north south ways, I look at the statistics Critically, I don't think the Southwest really needs a development commission. Let's be frank. No, I'm being blocked because uh, when I was in the Senate, there were a lot of uh, uh, issues that were raised supporting some regions. I supported them. Even when you look at the 30% derivation of the Southwest, if you look at the history, uh, I was among the people that supported it then uh, as a civil rights activist. Uh, I remember then. 
I was able to meet the National Assembly then, during the era of uh, Gali, led that uh, speaker, and I was among the few people from northern Nigeria that came out openly to support the cause, uh, because I believe in justice, I believe in equity, I believe in uh, 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 that every part of the country must be given uh, adequate attention if it needs it. So that was the reason why I supported that course at that time. And I believe right now, what the regions come and support the Northwest, because we're in this country, we know what's happening, we don't have to politicize every issue. And that is the reason why we came out openly to insist that there should be no waste development commission. And I'm, I was happy when some senators from the Southwest, from the South South, from the Southeast supported that bill by Deputy Senate President uh, Jibrin Baro. I'm going to follow it up, and I, I, I was really impressed. So for me, at this critical time, the only zone that needs this development commission is the Northwest. I'm uh, not being well, biased. I'm well. being very frank. Anyway, um, some politicians from other regions, especially the southwestern region, might want to disagree with you. But then it's, it's just uh, basically an opinion. But if you look at the current administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu and also your own administration and all of the uh, APC-led administration in various states, it looks like um, this current administration is doing something that is quite unprecedented in terms of working with uh, opposition parties. You know, for instance, we have uh, Minister Yesom Wiki. You know, working with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, we also had we we've also seen some opposition politicians uh, who were with the president during inauguration of some projects and even talking to the president. In fact, some of the fiercest fiercest um, critics critics of the president, uh, Atiku Abubakar, did not exactly criticize the president. It was even offering uh, advice to the president. What does this say about the overall impression and body language of this administration uh, in terms of? Uh, governance. Uh, to let me be very clear here, you know, I'm not surprised. Uh, I said it uh, many times. Uh, for some of us that we have with uh, President Bola Metinubu about 30 years ago, uh, when he was with us at the forefront of the fight for the enthronement of democracy in Nigeria, rule of uh, equality, he was at the forefront of that struggle when some of us were at the campaign for democracy. Working closely with the late uh, Bekore Sanguti and uh, Chief Gardner, if I bless memory, uh, we worked with him closely. And uh, President Bola at that time was one of the major factors of our struggle against the military dictatorship in Nigeria and his effort to ensure that we uh, fight for the government of democracy in Nigeria. Today we have democracy. Today, President Bola Metinubu, by the grace of God, is the president of Nigeria. And he was one of us in the struggle. Uh, that was the reason why many times I call on our comrades uh, within the civil rights movement, non governmental organizations, even some of them that have joined politics, to give uh, Mr. President the benefit of doubt. He fought with us. Uh, he stood by with us and he sponsored this struggle. He lost his freedom many times. Uh, he's someone who believed in democracy, who believed in the rule of law, who believed that everyone in this country was successful. He believes in the, particularly uh, in ensuring that the downtrodden of our people, as the masses, have at least uh, something to benefit from it in, in the government. And that's the reason why he, his approach is completely different. Uh, he's not someone who believes in uh, politics after uh, the election. He made it clear to all of us that, look, politics is over. It's about governance. And I want everyone, the opposition, uh, uh, to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's someone that has his own track record. You know, he was not among the military apologists in Nigeria. When we were fighting for democracy, he was at the forefront. Not only that, uh, he was also at the forefront of entrenching democracy because fighting for democracy is only one aspect. But entrenching democracy is even more difficult. And over years, uh, when he was a government of Lagos State, people are talking about where he built in Lagos State, the bridges, the world. This is for me. It's beyond that. What is more important? People tend to forget. President Bola Metinubu spent years in fighting to entrench democracy in Nigeria. Because fighting for democracy is one aspect. But ensuring that we have a government that run, run the country in line with the democratic norms is the most important thing. Where people are given opportunity to have a say. 
to participate, to be carried along. That is for me the key. That was the reason why some of us fought for democracy and went to detention many times at this military leadership in Nigeria. And that is the reason why, as one of the people that fought for democracy, along with Aswaju, I have no doubt in my mind he means well for Nigeria. He will turn up the fortunes of this country. At the end of the day, there will be light at the end of the tunnel because he believes in Nigeria. He believes in democracy. And that is the reason why some of us believe Nigeria better in the hands of President Bola Metin. All right. Uh, I want you to speak on the Pulaku Initiative, which uh, uh, the administration has uh, marked about $50 billion for the North. Uh, and the, mini the, the ministers that are involved are Minister of Health, Pate, Minister of Education, Tahir Maman, Defense, Badaru, Foreign Affairs Minister, Tugar, and uh, Economic Plan in Bagudu. Uh, 50, the 50 billion Pulaku initiative. Can you speak to that? Not many Nigerians yeah. are aware of this. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, you see, that is another area we need to comment, uh, President uh, Bola Metinubi, because you look at the uh, problem generally that uh, affected uh, the Northwest and two other states from the North Central, particularly the Beno State, uh, as well as uh, Niger State. And he decided uh, to now initiate this uh, very important project because as a result of the banditry, uh, kidnappings, in general in the Northwest, uh, we're talking about five states in the Northwest. Uh, that is uh, Kaduna, uh, Kazina, Zampara, Kebi, Sokotu. These are the states that are most hit, uh, as well as uh, two states from the North Central, Major state and Bernie state. Uh, as a result of that, Mr. President came out openly and said, uh, These IDPs are human beings. Uh, they were displaced because of the insecurity banditry. It's not their own fault. Uh, they are just victims of insecurity. And most of them have been displaced. They lost their uh, homes. Uh, they are now stranded. He believes all oh, IDP should not be staying in IDP camp forever. And because of that, he came with these very important initiatives. And that was the reason why seven states were included. And of course, as we are speaking, uh, this uh, project will be uh, flag up in Kaduna uh, because I went to Mr. President and he made it clear that uh, because of the unfortunate uh, uh, drone attack uh, in Tudimbili, in Kaduna, where 87% of very innocent people lost their lives, he made it clear. And Mr. Vice President also was recommended because he's the one leading the project on behalf of the federal government. Uh, for that, uh, as we're speaking, in the next two, three weeks, it will be flag up in Kaduna, where houses will be built for uh, the NDPs. Uh, in Kaduna, we made it clear that we want uh, uh, both part of Kaduna to be involved, uh, the northern part of Kaduna, as well as the southern part of Kaduna. So these houses uh, will be built for the IDPs, people that are displaced because of the insecurity. So that is what these services are going to be involved. So this is a leader who has the interest of the people that have particularly the downtrodden. Some of us that have been in the struggle, like I said, uh, you know, we are pro people and uh, we don't want any leader that uh, do not care uh, about the downtrodden and the masses of so that's why we support the initiative, we support Mr. President, we believe uh, that has uh, been very kind. We also commend his empathy for the people that are uh, less privileged, underserved, and poor within our communities. All we right. will benefit from this very important initiative that will be flag up in Kaduna in the next uh, two weeks by the president. Okay. So let's talk about uh, your one year in office as uh, the governor of the state. Uh, we know that the Northwest has a significant role it plays, uh, especially in determining uh, electoral outcomes. So uh, peace for that region signifies peace for Nigeria. And uh, your approach seems to be uh, using uh, the, both the kinetic and non-kinetic approach as uh, regards security. How would you assess uh, your one year in office and the fight against the banditry in that region. Okay, so in summary, let me say declare that uh, 
we uh, have some areas of uh, focus that we believe needs to be addressed. You mentioned security. Security for me is number one. Uh, that was the reason why uh, we look at it from two perspectives. Number one is kinetic, uh, and number two is non-kinetic. Non-kinetic for me, uh, in summary, is about good governance. That is the reason why in the state in the last two months, we match our board with actions. Uh, when I came in, I look at the statistics of our people that were completely uh, financially excluded. And I realized that about 75% of our people in the rural areas were financially excluded. excluded. That was the reason why I signed an executive order, uh, insisting that we must open accounts for at least 3 million under sub vulnerable people within Kaduna State. Today, as we are speaking, 2.1 million on the sub are now back to financial services center. Because of that, uh, two months ago, I was able to support small businesses with about 4.2 billion uh, to support the SMEs. Uh, because now all of them have been organized, they have their own accounts. We also support small businesses, people that are doing very petty small business capital. That's number one. Uh, number two, agriculture is very important. In the issue of Kaduna State, this is the first time uh, we are able to budget about uh, 22 billion supporting smallholder farmers. Don't forget, Kaduna State is number one in maize production in Nigeria, ginger production in Nigeria, and tomato production. That is the reason why, in the last few weeks, I went around the state, supported 40,000 smallholder farmers with inputs, uh, equipments, uh, some tractors for them so that they can be able to also. Uh, have more uh, production in those areas I mentioned and even other areas that were not number one in Nigeria. So we are supporting the farmers. We believe it's important. And of course, uh, in the next one week, we made it clear that we subsidize fertilizer for our farmers because we believe they need to be supported deliberately by the government. Right. That is the area of uh, agriculture. Yeah. Our focus is that. And not only that, we were able also to attract some intervention from German Development Agency, seeing what we're doing, they are doing the state government to support our smallholder farmers in training and also giving them some support and linking them, them up with the financial sectors so that they can access trading. This is another area that we feel is important. That's right. Again, in the area of security, I forgot to tell you that I signed the Security Trust for Bill, which I was now established in Kaduna because we believe it been the private sector must be involved in that. But to talk of education, in the last 12 months, uh, we were very aggressive in trying to reduce out of school children in Kaduna State. That is the reason why we built about 62 secondary schools, by building 50 more. We built 2,300 and 30,000 classrooms in Kaduna State in the last one year, as we are speaking. Absolutely. So, so these are things we are doing because we believe out of school children is something that we must lose. Your Excellency. Education is the greatest leveler. Right, Your Excellency. Uh, certainly, uh, if we definitely have enough time, I know that we'll go, you go on and on and on, you know, to read some, of the, some, of, some mm-hmm. of the achievement that, that you've achieved. Because yeah. even, even in the last, um, was it just yesterday, where you unveiled, you know, $20 million uh, lithium processing plants in Kaduna. But because of our yeah. time, yeah. because of our time, today, we won't today, be able to... Today, today, let me just say this one moment. We have been able to attract investment worth 240 million dollars that have generated about 14,000 jobs in Absolutely. Kaduna State. You Absolutely. just mentioned, right? Thank you, very much. right? So, keep, keep up with the, with the good work, uh, even though the opposition will always be there to criticize you on some of you know your actions. Mm-hmm. You know, definitely yeah. they are absolutely there. But thank you very, very much uh, for your keenness of insight into uh, your one year in office as well as the federal government's. Um, uh, Tinubu-led administration. Governor of Kaduna State, Senator Obasani, thank you so much.